Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. And today I'd like to have a discussion about authors who write in English but are not white or American or English is their second language or they're writing about a specific area in the world um, and it's it's spurred on by this review of Geisha of Guillain I think I said that right I'm losing my voice a little bit I'm getting a little sick um and it's by oh, what's the author's name? I have her I have her book Geisha Alive. Mineko Iwasaki. Iwasaki. Mineko Iwasaki. I think that's how you say it. And again, <laughs> I don't speak Japanese. But I try really hard to look things up to say them right. So this person and this is on Amazon, it's a one-star review. And one thing they complain about is the use of different words. Um, Mako and Ochaya instead of Apprentice or Tea House, which is used in, I think it's Anthony Golden's Memoirs of a Gay Show, which there's a whole thing between Iwasaki and Golden and the writing of Memoirs of a Gay Show, which is really interesting, which is why I never recommend Memoirs of a Gay Show. I recommend Gay Show Life because that's actually her story and not a bastardized version of it that Golden decided to write and make fictionalize it but still say that he talked to her and kind of got her in trouble because um, there is a bit of secrecy in the geisha world. Um, and an author who writes about their life story, and in, in the case of Iwasaki, she wrote it with a person who spoke English, and she does speak a little English, but she's under no obligation to use all American words um, to write her story. Like, she could use Mako and Ochaya and any other words that she wants to use because, one, it's her life. Two, you are under no obligation to read it. And three, we live in a world of smartphones and internet, and just about everyone in the fucking United States has a computer. It takes three seconds to look something up, especially when you have the book in front of you, and I'm using two states, and I'm going to open to a random page, because I bet I'll find an Indian word. Wow, I actually didn't. Um, and I know that Indian isn't the language, I just don't know what language it is. But a lot of food stuff, and clothing, and places, and everything is described using, I think they, I know Tamil is used in this a lot because that's um, what the woman is in this book. And again, I'm still learning about Indian culture, so I'm not as learned. But seriously, if there's something you don't understand, it takes three seconds to look it up in, online. You have a smartphone, and it'll take you two seconds. I mean, it's not a big deal. And to give something one star and list that as one of the reasons is kind of disgusting. Um, we tend to think that because we speak English, 
everything that we consume has to be English, and one, no, it doesn't. And two, God forbid you learn something when you read, especially if you specifically seek out, you know, stuff about geisha or stuff about India or books about China. And I'm just using those three because that's what I tend to have a lot of. God forbid you learn something. You learn a new word. You learn a new culture. You know, there's a different. There is a difference between Mako and Apprentice. It, it is a cultural difference because there's apprenticeships in Japan with sword makers and bakers and any other profession. Like there's apprenticeships in the U.S. But to be a Mako is something very different because it's a very different aspect of the culture. So God for fucking bitch you learn something. And I just, I see that a lot with uh, Amy Tan's writing. Um, I've seen a lot of people criticize her using Chinese words. I think she uses... Oh. I think she uses Cantonese. Um, I'd have to go back and read, but I know people complained about that, and apparently they complain about using Japanese words in a book written by a Japanese woman. I'm sure they complain about Hindi or um, Urdu. Is another language that's spoken. There's like 200 languages spoken in India, so there's that too. But I mean, God forbid somebody write in English and use part of their native culture, or you're trying to learn, you're reading a non fiction book trying to learn about geisha, and they use their native words and their native concepts because. There are concepts we don't have in English, and that's fine. But the Japanese have words for them, and they can describe them, and, but there's not a singular English word for it. So I guess just keep that in mind when you read books written by, you know, non-American, non-white authors, because I'm getting really sick of looking for a book and having the score be, you know, two or three stars because, oh no, there are non-English words in it and I can't be bothered to look it up on Google because I don't know how the internet works. Fucking deal, I guess. So, I guess my discussion is, what do you think of this? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think... If a book is brought to America or written in English, it should be completely in English and we shouldn't have to think regardless of what we're writing or what we're reading or are you kind of okay with having to look things up? Uh, let me know in the comments below and have a good day, happy reading, and I will see you later. Bye-bye!